we really shouldn't trust anybody. And you damn sure don't trust anybody based on their merit because everyone is in it for themselves. W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me? Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, how can a man regain confidence in people after being cheated on or betrayed? For example, if a man is cheated on by his girlfriend, how can he trust girls afterwards? Or if I trust a man to keep my stuff safe and he steals my stuff, how can a man regain trust and confidence in people after facing such things? As you say in the US, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And so this brings me to a very unpopular idea that we really shouldn't trust anybody. And you damn sure don't trust anybody based on their merit because everyone is in it for themselves. W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me? Everyone, even looks at me, I, I've been with my wife since we were teenagers and I know that she puts herself first. So if it comes boils down to it, as great as things are, I am not so foolish to think that she might not betray me. Does that mean I walk around being uh, being nervous? Walk around like a, uh, you know, who are these people like? They're looking for people to hurt them all the time. Do I look, walk around waiting for it to happen? No. Do I walk around distrusting people actively because I'm trying to protect myself? No. But always, always, always in the back of your mind, recognize you ultimately can only trust in the Lord. You can only, I can't even trust myself. I can't even trust myself. Listen to this right here, bro. How could you trust anybody else when you can't even trust yourself? And I'm sure I'm not alone. I'm sure I'm not the only one that makes a promise to myself and breaks it. That do, does things that I say I wasn't going to do or not do things that I say I was gonna do. I can't even trust myself. I can't trust me, I can't trust no one. And so I don't think, I, you know, I was listening to uh, a YouTube video the other day uh, by this guy who does these videos uh, on the world, the, he calls the world the symbolic world, I forget his name, really cool guy. Um, and he was talking about extreme, he, he talks about how postmodernism has facilitated something called extreme hospitality. And this is where we are basically open to everything and that we're just trusting everything. And then rather than setting boundaries for the future, we just trust in this, this idea of progress, which basically means that whatever comes our way, I'm just going to accept. And he talks about how there's great benefit to it, but it's also a damn curse. And it shows up this way when we just trust anybody willy nilly. We trust the government. We trust the doctors. We trust the science. Trust the science they keep telling us. Trust the science that keeps changing. I don't trust any of it. I don't trust nothing. No trust. Now, does it mean that you, like I said, you walk around bitter? And you walk around, uh, you know, like angry and and constantly vigilant against those in your world and those in your family, those are your friends and those in your environment. No, it means you always got an extra eye open in the back of your head. Oh, you know, they say I have an eye in the back of my head. Always keep that eye open in the back of your head. Always sleep with one eye open, right? Like I'm sleeping, but I also got one eye open. And you know people not by what they say, by, but by what they do, right? I've betrayed people. I've betrayed people before, and I think about it in my past, you know, things I've done in the past, and I'm like, you know, I, I, I check myself out in retrospect, and I'm like, damn, like, I did, that, I did that guy wrong. But all of my actions leading up to that should have been red flags for that person. Now, I'm not saying that it was their fault that I betrayed them, but in retrospect, I look back, and I'm like, you know what? I never, I never showed myself worthy of that person's trust, right? I, I had a lot, there were lots of red flags, but people would ignore red flags because why? You're supposed to trust. You're supposed to be open. That's what the guy was talking about. Jonathan Pregu was in it, what his name. Jonathan Pregu, Pregu, something like that on YouTube. Symbolic world, check him out. 
uh, he was talking about this idea in our culture that we're just supposed to be open. Don't be open. Don't be open. Don't be trusting. Don't be stupid. Always have a little guard up, right? Always be a little suspicious. That's the word I was looking for before. Always be just a little suspicious. Always have just a little bit of your eye open. Always have a little bit where you have where you, where you have an escape route or an escape plan. Not that necessarily that you're that you're uh, you know actively planning your escape, but know that you can that you can get out that there's a back door for you, right? If because this person could turn on you in any moment. Don't live your life once again in constant skepticism, but but be one of the worst things that we could do, you know. And it's tough, man, because we live this life because we have the imago Dei, which is the image of God within our soul. Because we are made in the likeness and image of God, we want true integrity. We strive for integrity within ourselves, and we strive for integrity within our environment. And we want to trust. We want to trust ourselves. We want to trust people. But we're broken, we're fallen, we're flawed, right? And so you got to keep that in your mind. You got to keep that, you got to keep that reality present in your mind. And so that's it, man. I know, you know, you're talking about maintaining confidence in people after being betrayed. Look, even before being betrayed, keep one eye open. If somebody to steal from you, that means that you didn't keep that one eye open. Keep that one eye open. Don't trust nobody. Don't once again, don't be suspicious all the time. Just be aware. That's really what it is, more than anything. It's aware. A lot of times it's street smart, right? I'm not so street smart naturally. I'm kind of a fool. I've let a lot of people take advantage of me. When I was a kid, I let these kids steal my bike. I let them I helped them steal my bike. That's how dumb I was when I was a kid, right? And I'm still kind of like that because I have a, I'm, I'm naturally open. I'm naturally, I want to trust people. But just in my experience over time, you know, I'm 42 years old, I recognize that's a flaw. I can't keep doing that. I let these kids steal my bike. These kids were from the town over, right? And uh, me and my friends from my town, we, walk, we were riding our bikes in, in the school park. And these kids from the, from the town over. And they came and they, they wanted to race. They were like, hey, uh, my friend got a bike, but I don't have a bike. I want to race my friend. Can I race, can I race him on your bike? And I was like, yeah, I got a fast bike, man. You're going you're gonna to win. <laughs> you're going to win, man. Sure. And they took off, the two of them, riding their bikes, right? And they got to the, to the stop sign. The stop sign was where the, uh, the end was. And they just kept riding. They just kept riding, they just kept riding, they kept riding off into the sunset and disappeared. Right? I had to learn that lesson. You don't just trust anybody. My dad, my dad yelled at me. He was like, that was dumb. You don't go just trusting people. <laughs> my dad, my dad don't trust anybody. Right? I'm a little bit, I'm definitely a lot more open than my father, but I understand why my father's the way he is. You don't trust anybody, man. So just come full circle, man. Like you said, fool me once, shame on you. That's right. Yeah, I gave you a chance. That's right. You give people a chance. But fool me twice, shame on you. Shame on me. That's a good way to put it, dude. So I hope that helps. Don't Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where, among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.